Rick and Morty spec script, hypoglycemia cat. <coughs> Act 1, interior living room morning. Morty and Summer sit on the sofa and watch the TV. Half-assed birthday decorations litter the house. Jan Michael Vincent is... Oh man, there's no one quite like Jan Michael Vincent. <laughs> trapped inside the bodies of 16 Jan Michael Vincents. That makes no sense. Uh, you make no sense, Summer. No one asked for your opinion. Shut up, Morty. <laughs> Rick enters with a gun-shaped object and zaps Morty and Summer. Ah, oh, what the hell, Rick? Yeah, what the hell, Grandpa? You'll thank me later. Oh, what awful thing he's gonna do to me this time. Summer looks at Morty. Rick looks at Morty. Silence lingers. Oh, jeez, did I just say that? Duh, Morty. Summer stands up in self-realization. I didn't mean to say that. You were saving that valuable insight for yourself, huh? Uh, what have you done to us, Rick? It's an <clears throat> inner dialogue zapper. Zapper? Yeah, that doesn't sound very scientific, Grandpa. Jerry enters and sits on the armchair and begins to read his newspaper. In some dimensions, they're so concerned with getting people to tell the truth that they don't bother with what sounds scientific to you, Morty. <laughs> Summer, like in Boston. God, Jerry, way to go and make a sweeping generalization. Maybe try and shield your kids from your prejudice. Well, I just thought. Nobody cares, Dad. At all. Listen to your kids, Jerry. Jerry is deflated. How long are we going to say what we think for, Rick? About a day, Morty. I'm surprised you haven't had more thoughts to vocalize yet. Uh, I don't want to inner out or inner. This sucks. If monologues were good enough for Shakespeare, Summer, they're good enough for you. Wait, you said they were inner outer. Well, Summer, clearly none of you guys can say outer inner dialogue. Why have you done this? You're a real jerk, Grandpa Rick. Just enjoy speaking your mind, Summer. Rick begins to leave towards the garage. I don't want to speak my mind! Not in school, anyway. Everyone will hate me. Everyone hating you sounds like your problem, not theirs. But Grandpa Rick! No one cares about your social anxiety, Summer. I hate to agree with you, Grandpa Summer. Then don't, Jerry. Jerry folds his newspaper and gets up. I don't have to take this. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Like you have anywhere to go, Jerry. It leads. Job leads. I don't see you doing much chasing, Jerry. Just saying, it's something to think about. Rick leaves towards the garage, humming Charles Wright's Express Yourself. <coughs> Jerry sits back down. Summer and Morty go upstairs. Interior garage continuous. Beth waits tentatively, touching nothing and looking at everything. Rick enters the garage. Jerry's got some leads, Beth. He's been saying that for months now. He'll never get a job, trust me. I check. Do you think we should, you know, separate? Well, he is the worst. But what, what do I know? I've only traveled through dimensions and outsmarted most of the multiverse. Rick gets into his spaceship and opens the door for Beth. Happy birthday, Beth. Thanks, Dad. Beth fastens her seatbelt. The space cruiser takes off. I can't believe you're finally taking me on one of your space adventures. It's really overdue, Beth. The important thing is we're doing it now. So where are we going? Or is it when? Uh, I don't pick up teenagers and make them tightrope incest, Beth. Just not my deal. Oh, of course. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> it's where, Beth? It's where? Interior school, day. Morty nervously sits in his math lesson, staring at Jessica. Morty's hand covers his mouth in an attempt to suppress the vocalization of his thoughts. Mr. Goldenfold instructs the class. It's math, okay? The class is silent. I don't need to tell you how squaring works. It just does. You better respect it. Otherwise, you'll find yourself in a whole world of trouble. Trouble you can't smart mouth your way out. Now, who knows how you square a number? The class is silent. Jessica? Brad? Do any of you know basic math? Morty squirms. Morty, you look like you're itching uncomfortably to tell us the answer. Morty struggles with his hands over his mouth before, unable to contain himself, he allows himself to speak. I think squares are childish and stupid. Just like high school. Things move pretty quickly, you know. You can miss it thinking about numbers. I'm not a number, so why should I care about numbers? A person shouldn't believe in squaring. They should believe in what they see. A square doesn't change how I feel. How Does a number even want to be squared? Morty's Ferris Bueller-esque speech is not delivered with the same confidence as Matthew Broderick. Nonetheless, the class applauds Morty and his honest stream of consciousness. Lord Almighty, you think numbers are a joke? Is this a joke to you? You think you're charismatic, Morty? 
Do you think you have an arrogant charm? Morty Smith, you are not too smart for math. You hear me? Uh... The bell rings. The class rushes out. Interior, space cruiser, beyond the construct of time. Beth stares out of the window intently. Rick drives his space cruiser. It's breathtaking. Do you ever get amazed by the infinite potential and possibilities out here? You get to start again. Uh, not really. Most of the time there's just infinite pains in my ass and prostate. The cruiser heads towards a planet that looks like a giant thread ball. Squanch 426. Exterior, Squanch 426, continuous. The planet's surface is made of yarn. The planet is home to thousands, possibly millions, of cats. Here we are. So many cats! I love it! Rick leaves his space cruiser and opens the door for Beth. Have you got me a cat? Beth exits the vehicle. I'd never enslave an animal for pleasure, Beth. Oh, no, I didn't mean to. Got you! We're here to pick up your old cat. But Mr. Kittens died and went to Kitty Heaven. Remember? Yeah, literally. <clears throat> He didn't die, Beth. Your mother, God rest her, just didn't want a cat. So, in my infinite wisdom, I put him here on Squanch 426, a place where time is just a human construct. Time is a human construct? Ever seen a clock, Beth? Hmm, I suppose you're right. But I thought time was a dimension. The fourth one, I bet. Hmm. But, see how far that theory gets you out here. So, I can have Mr. Kittens back? I sure hope so. Otherwise, we'd waste a whole lot of dark matter getting here. Squanchy appears from a weave. Holy Squanch! What the Squanchy doing here, Rick? Squanchy, what's up? I'm, I'm here for Mr. Kittens. Squanch? I think he's in the nip field, Squanchy. That's Squanch. Beth misuses the term and is shocked. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Rick and Squanch lead the way over hills of yarn. Well, Squanch did he know I was here? Well, I know how terrified the Galactic Federation is of yarn and how much you love that nip. Too right, bro. The Galactic Federation is scared of yarn? Yarn's like anthrax to them, Beth. O only worse. Or, for better, depending on your view of the soulless cooperate federation. Exterior, the nip fields continuous. There is catnip as far as the eye could see. The occupants of the field resemble those who inhabited <clears throat> opium dens. The cats heard. There he is! Not so loud. We're trying to squanch. In the field is a relaxed cat that has a gray complexion, much like Rick. It is Mr. Kittens. I can't believe you're here, just the way you were. Believe it, Beth. Mr. Kittens in the flesh. Rick laughs. Beth holds Mr. Kittens. Mr. Kittens purrs. All is well. A crash, a thud, and an echo disrupts the tranquil scene. The wind blows, and in the distance, a cat monster emerges ferociously from a bed of wool. 